Tonight we bring you part three of our exclusive series, Burning Coal Country. The first two parts were about an active mine fire burning underground in Schuylkill County and the response from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Tonight, 69 News reporter Rob Manch speaks to a man who lives less than two miles away from that active fire. He's here in the studio tonight. Rob, people were unaware that the fire was even burning up there. Yeah, that's right, Wendy. So the closest neighborhood to the Girardville fire, as it's called, is called Raven Run. There are fewer than 10 homes up there, but they're all only about a mile from the site of this fire. One man who lives there, Victor Marini, was willing to speak with me on camera. He says he has hiked into the hills before, but I was the first to inform him of the fire not far from his front door. <laughs> The quiet neighborhood of Raven Run sits on top of a mountain just to the west of Shenandoah Borough. There's not much road traffic here. The kids can play in the street. You have peace of mind when you're home. Victor Marini has been living here for six years now. But like his neighbors we spoke with, he was completely unaware that just over a mile to the west of his front door, a coal fire is actively burning underground. Now, Marini's concerned his home is no longer safe. I do believe that that mine fire will catch us some at some interval. We saw on DEP's own map from 1983 that the Centralia mine fire was considered likely at that time to eventually spread to the Raven Run neighborhood. Another map created by the DEP in 2012 shows a red dotted line around the edge of the fire, indicating it's unknown how far underground it spread. We took our questions about the mine fire to geologist Frank Pizzaglia at Lehigh University. It's one of the legacies of the anthracite mining, and so it's, it's an ongoing risk. We showed Pizzaglia on a map of the region exactly where we found the Girardville mine fire and asked him what the likelihood is that it could have started in Centralia. He said the Centralia fire has been documented spreading before, but never as far as the fire in Girardville. And if you, you're trying to get it from here over to here, that's at least twice as far away. Now, that doesn't mean it, it can't because, again, the distance that it goes depends on the speed of the combustion. Bazaglia pointed us to some natural barriers on a geological map that could prevent the fire from spreading underground, but he also says that's not the whole story. Naturally, the seams are separated by enough sandstone or shale that the fire shouldn't be able to go. But what happens is you have a seam right here, you've got a seam right here, and then historically somebody put a mine tunnel in between those two. That tunnel gives the fire a new pathway to travel underground, and that's exactly what has Marini so concerned. There's a lot of unknown mine tunnels up there, and if this fire continues to spread, there's no way of knowing where those mine fires are gonna take it, and how, big, how much bigger it can, it can become. Wow. Okay, so can they do anything to stop underground mine fires? Right, Wendy, that's the big question. And as you can imagine, it's not an easy question to answer, but that is going to be the focus of part four in this series tomorrow night. So I take a look back at a different mine fire that threatened Shenandoah years ago and how they put it out. So the people in that Raven Run development, um, would their insurance protect them if this fire actually caused them a problem? Yeah, so an interesting aspect of the Raven Run neighborhood is everyone I talked to up there actually told me they have mine subsidence insurance on top of their homeowner's insurance policy because all of those homes are built on top of old mine tunnels. But on the DEP website, it says the, that insurance only covers the damage as a result of a mine tunnel collapse or from sudden unexpected breakouts of water from a mine tunnel. It doesn't mention anything about a mine fire, so it's not clear if those homes would be protected those folks are going to need to call their insurance provider to see if that is, in fact, covered. Wow. Um, not something that comes around every no. day, a mine fire potentially uh, burning underneath your home. Yeah. Wow. And another thing that doesn't come around is a neighborhood where a guy like you walks in and says, hey, there's a fire underground here. So. Yeah, they were a little shocked when I told them, I uh, hey, this is what I'm investigating. Yeah, wow. I bet they were. Okay, right. well, thanks for keeping us up to date. Rob Mash reporting. And you'll